Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're taking a look at another something very different. This is the Big Tony from Sakugan. It's a really interesting design, something I actually wasn't really familiar with, but as soon as I saw it, I just really wanted to check it out because it's just so different and so unique. It transforms into like a kind of tank mode and it's just got such a unique style to it. I think it's gonna be a very interesting one. Let's get into it in today's review. All right guys, taking a look at the box art here for a Big Tony, really cool box art. I'm not really sure what the setting is, some sort of like a jungle sort of setting there, valley. It looks very cool with the waterfalls in the background. Once again, some fantastic work on the illustration with some weathering and just all of the dirt and grime and everything, all the details there on the illustration look very cool. On the side of the box, you got the same thing there and it might not be easy to see, but this does say 170 second scale up there. On the side of the box, we can see some different action poses of the kit and some detailed shots of like the claw hand, the wire that it's got that it can shoot out there and just some different posing options that you can do with this. It can transform into its vehicle mode there like that, which does also look very cool. And on the other side of the box, we got a just front and rear view what the kit looks like when it's all built and painted up. And then a little introduction over here to the Sakugan story, a story that I'm completely unfamiliar with, I'll be honest with you guys. I've not ever seen it or I don't know anything about it, but at least there you've got a little introduction there in Japanese and in English so I can read up on that. So go ahead and open up the box. And as you guys can see, it's a fairly good size of box. I can guess just based on the design, we're gonna have a number of pieces in here that are gonna be pretty large size, but it's gonna be generally kind of like parts and of the size of like a standard HG Gundam kit. Here's the front of the instruction manual, which once again features just a photograph of the front and back of the kit. Some other different poses there, transformed into vehicle mode. Just some nice reference images here on the back. We do have our color guide down there at the bottom, which is in Japanese and English, but this part is just part of the transformation. So it looks like we've got a couple of color pages here at the end, just going over the end of the construction and the transformation into vehicle mode. We have our parts list on the inside there as well, and then all the rest of the construction. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. First off, we do have a decal sticker sheet, and it's mostly just some color adjusting stickers, white and gray, and then some caution striping stickers. Then you do have these chrome stickers, a couple in like plain chrome there, and then this kind of chrome gold for little accents on there. We also got these little round stickers like this, which I guess are probably gonna be like for the eyes. So those will look really nice on the kit. And then we've got two gray wires here, which are about 24 centimeters in length. These are gonna be for your kind of wire accessories. And they form really nicely, and these should hold up the weight and hold the form nicely, so those will be very cool. Runner A here is a few pieces in yellow. We've got two of those. Runner B is a few pieces here in our main light blue color. We've got two of those as well. Runner C is a much larger runner here with the majority of all the rest of our blue parts. Runners D1 and D2 are some parts here in light gray with this middle section being doubled. Runners E and F are all of our kind of joint and internal frame parts, and these runners are in a dark gray ABS plastic for reference and we've got two of the F runner. Runner G1 here is in dark green for the like backpack on the back of it and runner G2 is for like the treading parts on it and this is in a softer plastic so this will be malleable so you can fit this around the shape. So this should be interesting to see how these work on the kit. Alright guys, here is Big Tony all built up. Not necessarily all that big of a model kit. It's about standard height for like your standard HG size Gundam kit. Obviously you're just going to be a lot more wider, bulky, very different proportionally and design wise of course. Really interesting design. Putting this kit together was very unique and just kind of, I think you'll see as we get into the proportion of it, just like the way all the parts of it move around is so weird and different. But that's one of the reasons why I was interested in this kit in the first place is its uniqueness and that is definitely its most notable feature. I mean, it's a cool model kit, very unique. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the articulation and everything here. Just a reminder, you have these stickers that go in there for the eyes. Uh, so far, I've just have just the plain foil stickers on there and not these like half round ones, which will definitely make the eyes look even more cool. But as they have, they do catch the light nicely. And a lot of the stickers here, like up here on the top, up over the kind of shoulder parts here, you have little bits of stickers on this part right here and here on like the back of the foot so you have these nice little light stickers around here on the back to these kind of like chrome ones there and really great detail around on some of these parts like here on the backpack so obviously once this is all painted up that's going to look really cool very realistic kind of looking these little panels here on the side can come off and they come off pretty easily so if i just kind of tap the model 
like that. You can see that just came off on its own. So they don't fit in there super tightly, but these fit in with these extra pieces that you then have to connect together. There's more stickers on there, but that's to basically simulate that this part is folded out with more lights for, I could think, when it's transformed into the vehicle mode, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. You also have stickers, of course, for the striping bits here on the knee, on the arm. Those fit on there pretty well, pretty convincing. They're not too obviously stickers. For the hands, you have these open version of the hands. As you can see, while there is some articulation, these yellow parts do tend to fall off kind of easily, so the fingers will move a little bit. They're not really meant to hold anything in particular, they're just meant to just look open like that, but you can just swap those out very easily, just pull that off and put on this just regular closed version of that, drill hands. A couple of those stickers I missed actually right down there. So there's a number of them. You have some articulation here between the top and bottom half, you can rotate that. The arms will swing on kind of a double joint there, you can kind of switch between those, moving that forward and back. This whole section will move up and down a little bit there, obviously far forward and back. The arm is then just plugged onto the end of there via a ball joint, so you can rotate that around as you might like, up and down, and you can rotate the arm left and right there. The bend at the elbow giving you about 90 degrees bend there. On the top of the arm, this little bit is meant to flip up like that, again for little lights for the transformation to vehicle mode, but those don't actually have stickers for those lights. You probably could cut those out, cut out tiny little circle stickers out of like the negative space on your sticker sheet probably. Background on the backpack, these kind of rocket thruster bits can be rotated side to side a little bit. And then the legs are pretty wonky as they just kind of move around all over the place just because of the transformation. The joints of them are just kind of everywhere for those being able to fold up and stretch out and down here at the feet. They're pretty weird because like these parts of the feet, which are kind of like the front and back, are attached onto like the inside of the leg there. And that whole foot essentially, quote unquote foot sort of, is on a ball joint there, so you can kind of move that around. You can adjust the angles of these parts and everything. So it's kind of like a lot of moving parts going on there. And that does sort of feel like it makes it a little bit tricky to get it to stand properly just because of all the moving parts there in the feet. You also have your option part for the light shutter here on the front like that to be able to close it to look like the kind of eyes are more protected there and you have stickers there for those. That's kind of an interesting option part. And then you have your anchor wire units. So if you want to have like the actual anchor part just look like it's stored in there, you can have that in there like that, or you can take it out. You have your wire parts, so you just stick it onto the end of here. In order to actually install that, you have to remove this part off the side of the arm. You got some cool detail up inside there. And you put this part in there in its place, put this back onto there. So basically, so I guess this part is kind of meant to pop out like that, stick the wire in there as hard as you can, and then you can form the wire anchor out of the arm there like that, which is pretty cool and it's quite long. It's about 24 centimeters in length in total, so it makes for a nice effect, I think. And one last thing to point out for you guys here is that the arm part also extends, and this is also for the transformation, but all those gray bits you see in there, that's all stickers. So there's like four pistons there, and it's one, two stickers on each one, so eight stickers times two, it's 16 stickers there for your arms just wrapped around these you know, gray parts there. But here's a look at the kit in its transformed state, and it's pretty cool looking I gotta say it was definitely a little bit tricky to do while you're looking at the instructions going through step by step trying to follow them and do the transformation it's quite confusing because there's like a lot of moving parts in there and moving everything exactly the right way step by step kind of complicated I found it actually kind of more easy to just look at the image of like the end of the transformation and just trying to make it, move everything to make it look like it's matched up in the right way. But again, in this vehicle mode, it is definitely very unique. That said, I do just kind of prefer it in just regular robot mode. That's probably how I'm going to keep mine. That said, in its robot mode, there are still some issues just with moving with just the fact that it has so many moving parts, especially in the legs and even in the arms. I'm noticing it is a bit of an issue that you just kind of have uh, some parts, some joints where it's just a little bit weak. There's just so many moving parts with this kit. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for there to be weak points and there definitely are a few here and there so as you're trying to get everything moved around in the right way you might notice it does feel a little bit floppy it doesn't feel as tight as you might like once you do get it solid into a pose does it look good yes it definitely looks very cool
cool and very unique so that's going to be the main thing that I'm going to pull from this kit in that when you're working with it in hand it feels a little bit janky but it looks awesome and there's just not going to be too many kits out there that you can find that look anything like this so if you're looking for something different if you're looking for something that's going to give you a different experience a different result and I think this kit's going to look fantastic once it's all painted and weathered and everything like that as it is straight out of the box it looks fine but I think this is one that's definitely going to look so much better once it's painted and you bring out all the details it's got on there and you just kind of weather it up a bit make it look like the machine that it looks like it is just based on all the details and everything with it this kit definitely has a lot of potential and i think it's worth checking out so let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below what do you think about it is it something that you've been interested in or not are you familiar with the sakugan series that this is from and of course if you guys are interested in checking out this kit or any of the hg kits or anything else from bandai you can check the link down in the video description below to usa gundam store you can head on over to the website there's a lot of really cool stuff to find there and as always guys just thanks so much for liking the video commenting subscribing that's all greatly appreciated. Until next time, hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.